Ken Walker or Derrick Henry in 2023? And I'll tell you that in PPR, Derrick Henry, PPR, he actually had more catches than Walker. He averaged yep. five more fantasy points per game than Ken Walker. It, that's very deceiving because Walker played those games when Rashad Penny was healthy. Right. You got to take those first five out. You didn't yeah. stat that? that? I did. Yeah, I've got I, it. I, I can, yeah. I mean, there's 17 game pace, Walker versus Henry. Very, very similar, actually. Uh, but who do you guys like better, Walker or Henry in 2023? I, I leaned with the youth, and I took Kenneth Walker, who's seven years younger than Derrick Henry, and does have room to improve as a pass catcher if Seattle wanted to go that route. From week six on, he averaged 15.9 full PPR points per game. That was 3.2 fewer than Derrick Henry. I still don't see a, a path for Derek Henry to become a 50 catch guy. And I really want to see what happens with the Titans offense um, in the coming months. What are they going to do with their offensive line? What are they going to do at quarterback? There, there's a lot in play and there's some obvious risk with Henry at this point because he will be 29 next season. Play caller as well uh, for Tennessee. And, um, you know, I, I just look at it. There's uh, everything trending in the right direction for Seattle. They got pick five, they got pick 20 in the first round. Um, you know, so they have the opportunity to, you know, enhance their offense. The only thing that concerns me is, you know, Derrick Henry is going to be the guy. Pete Carroll is Mr. Preach Competition. And will they bring in somebody else? It's not going to be a first round pick. It's not going to be a high price free agent. Could be Rashad Penny. Could be back. right. That's what I was about but to say. are they going to bring in somebody of significance to compete with Walker? So that's the one thing you got to keep an eye on. But right now, as it stands, following the, the playoffs, I, I'm taking Ken Walker. I have them. Four spots apart in my running back rankings and about Ooh. 10 spots apart in uh, – no, not that much. Like seven spots apart in the top 24. Can you – do you have your running back rankings open? Can you run he's, down he's, Walker? Walker's who else, five. Who else, who else? Uh, yeah, like who's – I have Etienne over, over Derrick Henry as well. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just – I'll probably be out on Henry uh, for me. So I think he's ninth. Uh, it's um, – right now it's Walker, Etienne, Mixon, Jacobs, Henry. And so okay. Jacobs will be dependent on where he where he plays. And right right behind Henry is Brees Hall. Brees Hall is 100. percent Brees Hall will be ahead. Oh, of you got to put Brees Hall if he's 100. percent He looks good ahead of Derrick Henry. I agree yep. with that. Uh, I've got Walker and Henry back to back, five and six among running backs. Okay. Yeah. And, and in the first draft, we did Henry to go ahead of Walker. It's uh, it's interesting because neither of these guys are are big pass catchers, and um, you know, Walker wasn't their third down back, so that might limit you know both of their upside, but. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be quite as important as it used to be uh, that, you know, to be an elite running back without the big pass catching role. Okay. Anyway, well, I wouldn't say that elite, but like top, you know, seven, eight, it's top six, seven. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Top one or two unlikely for the Walker, I would say, unless he starts catching a lot more passes. Um, all right. Chargers. What happened to Justin Herbert? He went from QB three per game in 2021 to QB 15 per game in 2022. And even if you look at there, I think there are only four games, five games where he had both a healthy Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. He scored 21.5, 8.7, 5.5, 20.7, 22.8 fantasy point. That's I mean, fine in three of those five games, terrible in two of those five games. Um, so what happened to Justin Herbert, Dave? You know, he still set a career high in pass attempts and completion rate, and he wasn't really off target. But the three biggest things that I saw when I dug into the data, his touchdown rate plummeted. You touched on that already, Adam. Uh, career low, 3.6%. He was in the fives in his first two years of his career. Zero rushing touchdowns. He had eight touchdowns on the ground through his first two seasons. And his completion in his dot was actually lower without Keenan Allen than with Keenan Allen. If you look at weeks two through 10, completion rate was just below 65%. 6.2 A dot, 11 touchdowns. Week 11 through their wild card game, the completion rate was almost 70%. A dot of 6.5, that's still low, but something that was higher with Allen, 12 touchdowns in nine games. I think Keenan Allen was a part of it. I think injuries were a big part of it. Remember, he hurt his ribs. Yeah. His offensive line went through a ton of other injuries. And you, you mentioned it. They struggled a little bit in the red zone, and he didn't chuck it downfield nearly as much as, as we'd seen in the past, or maybe not had as much success doing so as we had seen in the past. I I, I think I'm going to be in on Justin Herbert next year because his draft stock, you called him a loser. You're not calling him a loser in terms, Jamie, of him being like you're out on Justin no, Herbert next no, year, no. but you're going to be able to get him at a much better round next year than you did this year. He's, he's going to go at best fifth. He's going to go behind Mahomes and yep. Allen. And this Hurts, past year he was, going, he was going ahead of Mahomes. He was the second quarterback. He was my board. second. He's going to go behind Hurts. 
is going to go behind Burrow. I mm -hmm. think those four are, great, are almost certainly going to go ahead of him. Now, Burrow may slide. That's something I think that could be debated. And Fields may jump him if he stays in Chicago and they add a lot to it, you know, depending on what they do at their draft because of what he does as a rusher. Lamar Jackson may also go ahead of Herbert if he's back in Baltimore. I know Heath, for example, likes Lamar Jackson still as a top five guy. Yeah. And so they're, 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 he's in that mix now, I think, of – Guys that you will settle for, and, and I use that in not necessarily a derogatory way, but someone that you'll be happy to get. Um, Trevor Lawrence may jump him too. I mean, you know, that's a guy that's 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 ascending and is going to get Calvin Ridley a, a significant piece. So uh, we'll see who the play caller is. We'll see what happens with the receiving core because Keenan Allen's not getting younger. Uh, but the offensive line, when healthy, is great. The running back catches passes as well as anybody in the league. Uh, Mike Williams is still a tremendous playmaker. You know, we'll see if what they do with Gerald Everett, but. There's a lot to love about Justin Herbert. And remember, you know, you, you, you mentioned Adam. Why did he fall off? He lost Mike Williams and Keenan Allen for the majority of the beginning part of the season. And so not having those guys and trying to readjust, playing through a rib injury. Literally 46 off. snaps of Keenan Allen between weeks one and eight. Yeah, it was one and sorry, weeks one and ten. It was uh it was, I think at one point they had played 17 snaps together, Williams, Allen, and Herbert, you know, because of Something how much like those, yeah. those guys had missed. And so um Josh Palmer is somebody that that's on the rise, and hopefully the new play caller will will be able to un unlock that more than just a, an injury replacement. So, uh, yeah, he's he's going to be one of the best values on draft day uh, for his position. I don't mm -hmm. think what we saw last year is is the norm, and the ceiling that we got two years ago may not be the norm either. But you know, I think he's probably closer to that than he is what we saw in twenty twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got the twenty second pick in the draft, so I I would love to see that. That's a good wide receiver range, so I'd love to see them. Upgrade at wide receiver Kid from TCU would be awesome there. Yeah, I don't know if he'll make it that far, but you know, uh, some, some, someone exciting will probably be there at 22. Mm -hmm. All right. Miami question for Miami is to a tongue of Iloa, a top 12 quarterback in 2023 on a per game basis. He was number nine and four point uh, per passing touchdown leagues, number seven and six point. And that was, remember, leaving the Bengals game early. That included the Packers game, where a lot of people think he was playing with a concussion in the second half. He threw three interceptions. It's very possible. So uh, is Tua Tungabailoa a top 12 quarterback in 2023? I don't think so. I don't think he could draft it that way. He certainly can finish that way. But I think just based on what we what we know right now, you know, the fact that multiple concussions, uh, you know, this is a guy that had a hip injury in college, an ankle injury in college, concussion concerns now. Um, he had other injuries before this year too. Yeah, but it's it's you know significant chunks game. of time that that he's he's had to miss, and so the system is fantastic. Now, we saw <clears throat> excuse me a lot of the the big games, for the most part, came before they sort of got figured out a little bit. You know, the West Coast trip where the 49ers, the Chargers, you know, and then even coming back to Buffalo. I know he played well against Buffalo, but those two games in particular, it seemed as if Mike McDaniel's system got a little bit, you, you know, uh, you know understood um yes. so i i think it's tyree kill and jalen waddle you can make a case the best wide receiver doing the league and they played that way this season so that's a huge advantage um offensive line you know i i, I don't know if it what teron armstead's going to be next year you know he struggled down the stretch is he still their their premier left tackle in terms of being that guy so the uh, run game needs to be a little bit better clearly they need to find an answer to that and maybe there's a tight end that's brought in to be actual a uh, george kittle which is what i think mike made see there's some things that 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 you found out a little bit throughout the season that before they got Tyree Kill, Mike McDaniel was planning on Mike Kosecki having a much bigger role. Then Tyree Kill comes in, understandably and he so. He changed the whole. Plan. He changed. He yep. changed everything the way that it went. Kosecki's gone. He's not coming back. They're not going to franchise him again. So do they get more of a 49ers West Coast tight end that fits that system a little bit better? They might already so, have one. Uh, maybe they do, but you know that, that that's that's something I think you got to keep an eye on. So I, I think there's still a lot to love about Tua, but if uh, the, we're doing a draft. In, in about a half hour, uh, if if it comes down to me and my I'm the last guy to take quarterback and it's Tua and Daniel Jones, I'm taking Daniel Jones. That's interesting because I mean Tua <clears throat> was looking like the big rising star. He led the NFL in yards per attempt by a mile. Um, they were actually a pretty pass heavy team. They just ran so they were 27th in plays, and that happens I think when you get a lot of big plays. They didn't run a lot of plays, but they were very pass heavy. Second fewest rush attempts in the NFL. He's got those great wide receivers. Obviously, he looked like he was breaking out. Um, yeah, he did finish he did finish somewhat poorly, but if you look at it, look at the last four games he played. The Houston game looks bad on paper. He played two and a half quarters. San Francisco and the Chargers, they were bad. Uh, I don't remember. Did Armstead play in maybe one of those games? I think he missed the San Francisco game. 
Um, I'm not sure. He, I think you're right. He definitely missed. I believe it was Week 18 against uh, the Patriots. But um, that um, yeah, two to two though. Uh, I, I think he missed the San Francisco game, and they, he would. They, they he was a huge difference maker for them, Teron Armstead, and he's injured all the time now. But uh, anyway, you know, there's a lot to like about Tua, but also you kind of look at like he just kind of crushed some. He had four huge games, and other than that, he wasn't great. And um, the only thing about the concussions, if people are going to say no because of the concussions, I don't want Tua. It's possible that their GM, Chris Greer, is telling the truth, and he said he is not more, based on what we've heard from our doctors, he is not more susceptible to concussions than anyone else. It might have just been a bad run in that regard. So that's what the Dolphins are saying right now. They don't think Tua is more susceptible to concussions. He just had some bad luck this year. Throwing that out there. Yeah, so he's going to be a late-round pick that you'll have if you're streaming quarterback to begin the season. If you start your season with Daniel Jones and Tua Tungavailoa as your quarterbacks, just as an example, Jamie, you said you'd take Daniel Jones first. Maybe you'll take both. I know you're not a guy that likes to take no, but, I, yeah, but I, that's the yep. type of guy that Tua has to be. You can't make him your quarterback and that's it to begin the season unless it's a super deep league. But I, I would imagine the Dolphins realize that they've got to stick with Tua and if they're going to build around him, and they'll try and upgrade at the backup quarterback spot. Look, they 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 went into it with, I'm assuming the plan of, is Tua our guy for performance and for health? Teddy Bridgewater is one of the best backup quarterbacks you can find. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a guy with you know, starting experience. And when he started, he's certainly been more than capable of leading a team. We've seen it. He just had an unfortunate injury situation himself. He got concussed when Tua got concussed. He broke his thumb when Tua was out. So they the they line. they had the plan. Right. It's just a matter of will the other guy that they bring in next year, whether it's Teddy or somebody else, be better than Tua? And what I mean by that is, can he, if Tua misses time, can he be step as in good or better? And Wally Pippen, right? You know, and so that's the concern. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo's got ties to Mike McDaniel. Is that a route they go? I'd be stunned if he made. I, you it. never know, right? <clears throat> I hear you it. never know. All right, next question here. Let's talk about the Vikings. When will you draft Dalvin Cook? You alluded to it earlier, Dave. I'll give you the first word. When will you draft Alvin Cook, who on a per-game basis was 12th in uh, non-PPR, 14th at running back in full PPR? That's per game. When will you draft Alvin Cook? I would look at him in late round two, if not round three. 15.1 PPR points per game in 2021. 14 PPR points per game in 2022. He will be in his age 28 season. We've come to love him as a fantasy stud, but I think you've just got to view him through the lens that we talked about. Look at the game that he just had against the Giants, one of the worst run defenses in the National Football League. He gets over 20 touches, doesn't come through for a huge game, had some nice runs. Uh, I'll tell you what, there, there were moments in the Buffalo game where I was watching James Cook play, and I thought to myself, that's the Cook that I want to get. <laughs> like, I'd rather get James Cook in the – in. I don't even know if I can <laughs> say the middle rounds because he might end up going as a trendy breakout pick in round six or round seven. I'd rather have that value than Dalvin Cook between 20th and 30th overall. For me, it's round three. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think I'll get Dalvin Cook if he's, uh, if he's going around two. Um, we'll see. Again, you know, they have some issues. Uh, how healthy is the right tackle going to be? You know, after um, you know, Neil suffered the, I think it was Achilles or, or ACL, something you know significant. Um, how healthy is, Bra- or I'm sorry, is Bradbury going to be back? Their center. Uh, he's a free agent. You know, so that's two key pieces on the offensive line. Who's the backup going to be? Because Madison's a free agent. You know, does he walk and do they bring? They've in got somebody? some interesting guys. Well, you know, is is it Nawagnu or is it somebody else Ty that comes Chandler in? Handler could be that guy. He's sure, just a little, he's a little old too. Um, but is it somebody that you know if they go out and they and they draft because they know that Dalvin Cook is not their long term answer anymore? You know, so there there's a lot of play here with Dalvin, but uh, it's a great offense as a whole. He just did not take the step forward. I think that a lot of us were hoping for, especially after all the preseason reports of him being more involved in the passing. Right. That completely did not happen. Yeah. They were more pass heavy this year. Oh, much. That, that, that's the difference between Mike Zimmer coaching and Kevin O'Connell coaching. Sure. And you see it all the time with former quarterbacks that become play callers. They view the offense. <clears throat> I got what Jamie's got. Uh, <laughs> they view the offense through the, the quarterback. And that's why Cousins had a big year. Um, they could cut him and save eight million bucks. Let me see. I'm just I'm looking at it's got a, two million <clears throat> is guaranteed in late March. Um, they I think next year is probably more likely when they let him go. But if they really wanted to move on from him now, they could do it and not really take a big cap hit. I think the biggest difference for Cook, I, if you just, you know, you're not really into the numbers and I just 
You just played fantasy. You know Dalvin Cook wasn't as good as he normally was. It was touches. You know, the argument for Dalvin Cook was that he was still a pretty good running back. He wasn't an elite running back this year, but he he averaged 17.8 touches per game. That's catches plus carries. He averaged 19.2 carries the year before. So uh, just carries 19.2 to touches 17.8, and that's 15.5 carries per game. This guy was a workhorse. You could rely on him for a lot of 20 carry weeks, you know, 15.5 carries per game. That was the biggest difference for Dalvin Cook. He wasn't really bad. He just didn't get the work that he needed. His target share has been pathetic. 14.3% target share. And that's been going down three straight years now. So you can't count on that. But if they say, hey, we're going to commit to the run more, then maybe that could boost Dalvin Cook stocks. I just wanted to bring that factor in. Um, I, don't, right. I don't think that happens, though. I, I right. don't think that's Kevin O'Connell's offense. Um, and and again, you know, I, I'll go back to what I said with the the regard to the, the the story I just wrote. He had 21 total touches in this game against the Giants. If you were to say right now, Dalvin Cook averaged four yards per carry, which is probably low for where his career is, I'm going to guess, but four yards per carry and six catches. And I told you 21 total touches. You would have said what were his total number? Yeah, it was a bad game, but that that's. But he didn't average. What I'm saying, no, I'm saying, if you were to say right now, for Dalvin Cook, uh-huh. 21 total touches, six of them being catches in PPR, what do we yeah. think he would have scored? Oh, 20 plus, you know. Yeah. Right. He had 13 PPR points without. And that happened a bunch this year. That's right. One, maybe, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> right. It was a bad game. It was, and he finished really bad, too. Actually, his last several games, the Bears, the Packers. He right. really. I mean, are you interested in knowing how many games he had with north of 15 PPR? Or do we. That, and then we'll go to our. Last two questions. This year, well, he started off the year without getting any games north of 15 until week four. One, two, three, four, five, six games all year with 15 or more full PPR, decimal scoring. Um, I just might yeah. not be the same guy. 22nd, 22nd among running backs and targets per game. That's low. Had number He had number two fantasy running back numbers. I think that's his ceiling now. I don't know. I mean, if it, he also had a more bad touchdown look. He had eight touchdowns in 17 games, eight rushing touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns. He had a lot of, he had like the third most carries inside the five yard line. He only had eight rushing touchdowns. So uh, I don't, I just don't, I don't think he's like a scrub. I don't know. Nobody thinks that, but he just, right, got but where were, where he's, were he's we no, taking he's, Dalvin he, Cook last year? Top, top 10. He's, he's where is he, he now? He's no longer to me a, a top 24 pick. Okay. Let's go to Baltimore here. Um, which Mark Andrews do we get in 2023? Andrews averaged 19.1 fantasy points per game in his first six games. Unbelievable. And then 8.4 fantasy points per game in PPR in his last nine games. That does include one game that he left with an injury. But even if you remove that, it wouldn't be very good. Which Mark Andrews do we get in 2023, Jamie? I think you get a very good fantasy tight end. I don't think you're going to get the elite player that we saw in 2021. I don't think you're going to get the the guy who was a bust for a good portion of the 2022 campaign. I think he's a solid number one fantasy tight end, top three upside. You're still drafting him second based on what he can do because he still feels a little bit better than TJ Hawkinson or Kyle Pitts or George Kittle or these guys. Uh, they're all up for discussion. You know, maybe not Pitts, but they're all up for discussion. Dallas Goddard um, of, of what, you know, Andrews is. So he's fallen. You know, we went into the this season saying there were two. There was Kelsey and Andrews. And then the field. Now it feels like there's Kelsey in the field. And so Andrews has fallen back to the field. Not that that's a bad thing, but uh, I don't think you can expect 17 plus PPR points per game. I think you're looking at maybe 14 to 15. And that's why he's the number two guy and should not be a top 24 pick. But it's it's the discount again. We talked about it with Justin Herbert, and it's not going to be the same like level of discount as Justin Herbert will be in fantasy drafts in 23. I bet he still goes in round three. Someone's going to take him in round three in every single draft. If he somehow makes it to round four, that's amazing value. And I, I would expect that he will continue to be a big part of that Baltimore offense. The only thing I can think of is if the Ravens make crazy wholesale changes and they get a new quarterback and they trade for DeAndre Hopkins or something like that, or they add another receiver and they take somebody, they bring somebody on the field that's going to target the wideouts more than the tight end, target the perimeter, not the middle of the field, and maybe throw. I mean, they already throw pretty low volume. I would, but that I would just think if they, if, if they change the offense, it's a huge boost for Mark Andrews. 
because then you're talking about a more traditional passing attack. And so, yeah. right. And, and if he, there's and, somebody else taking 100 targets or 120 I, I, targets over the course of the season, I, I mean, think that obviously Marquise Brown him. was a 100 target guy in this offense. Mm -hmm. And that was in his best season, in Mark Andrews' best season two years ago. Right. So I, I don't think that that's necessarily a concern. But if you say just let, let and I'm going to use this a lot. Okay. To me, it's, it's, it's Derek Carr or better. So if you get Derek <laughs> Carr right now, let's say you put Derek Carr in Baltimore. Does Derek Carr make Mark Andrews better or worse? I would say better because now you're running an offense that's probably throwing the ball 35 times a game. Traditional and West so Coast if, style. If, right. if you're doing that, and again, the coordinator wouldn't matter here, but if you're doing that, and let's just say they bring in, you want to use DeAndre Hopkins as, as the, the benchmark as well, they bring in DeAndre Hopkins. That's kind of a high benchmark. But, but, but he's the biggest name that's, that's available at that position. Right. You know? So we're not talking about an Isaiah Hodgins. You know, going somewhere. You know, we're talking Juju. Let's say Juju. So Juju goes to Baltimore. We that was a rumor. Sure. So Juju goes to Baltimore. I think there's 150 targets available for Mark Andrews in that range. You know, maybe not that high, but 130. And I think there's 100 targets for for Juju. And I think it'll give you tell me Mark Andrews get 130 mm -hmm. targets. See, I, I don't know if he'll get 130, but I still think he's going to be a good fantasy. If guy. if, if, if there's if there's 35 passes per game from a quarterback that's not Lamar. See, I. Well, even if it's Lamar, if they, if they, and I, I, I should I say, think, I don't, I don't even want to if it's Derek Carr quarterback, I don't think they're going to move to a position where they say, okay, yeah, let's throw more when this entire franchise no, but, has but, been running the but ball that's, so but well. That's what I'm saying. If they, moved. if they move on from Lamar Jackson, they are going a complete 180. That, that, there's no reason to get away I don't from know it. If they will go Lamar Jackson has been an MVP. They're still going to want to. They've run the been. Ball. Oh, of course, they're going to still run the ball. But I'm talking about when they when when I'm saying they're hitting the reset button. I think everybody, and maybe including Harbaugh, but Harbaugh makes the most sense to stay mm -hmm. because why would you get rid of him? Of course. But the GM's the one that built this team, so he's probably got to go. The offense coordinator certainly has got to go. And then it's everything else is changing. And so if everything else is changing, yes, they're going to want to run the ball. Why would you ever get away from what they has been successful better. for you? Exactly. But if they're replacing Lamar Jackson, they're replacing Lamar Jackson to be a more 2022 offense and to throw the ball more mm. and be more in that regard. I don't think regard. it's going to be more of a like 2018 offense that they replace. But, but again, I, I'm, 2022, I'm not – you want Lamar. I'm not saying Derek Carr. I'm saying that type of player, you know, a, 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 a retread guy. Pocket passer that's, stays, that's, that's doesn't not, move right. that, too that's, much. That, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. yeah. All right, last question here. It's for Tampa Bay. If Tom Brady returns anywhere, can you see Tom Brady being a fantasy stud again? Really hard to see. Because if you look at the, the possible <laughs> destinations, right? Ian Rappaport said this over the weekend. It's Tampa Bay, again, they're still going to be in the mix. Sounds like he said goodbye to them last night, though. San Francisco, which to me would be crazy at this point. Tennessee, can never see that there. That'd be weird. And Las Vegas. So if he goes to Las Vegas, maybe. Now, two things would have to happen. I think Josh Jacobs is gone, and they don't have a rushing leader coming back. So it's a... It's more of a Tom Brady type running running game, where there's a you know hybrid type of guy that's going to catch the ball and be a little bit more on the pass catching side. Um, unless again, they're, and, and if they if it's still Jacobs, I think they're they're a more balanced offense. He's not throwing the ball forty times a game. Um, the offensive line's got to be much better than what he had in Tampa Bay. No matter where and, he goes, and, and Las Vegas has to in, invest in that. So I don't think he's you know he's forty six. I mean, look, he, you know, you could say offensive line, you could say. Godwin not healthy to be in the season, uh, no Gronk, all these things. He just looked old. You know, I mean, he really did. You know, he had some great moments. A um, lot of fourth quarter, you know, miraculous plays. Uh, he was let down by his receiving core. Mike Evans had a big drop even again last night, you know, when the game was out of reach. Yep. And, you know, they, they got the ball back on the onside kick. But, no, no longer an elite fantasy quarterback. Can he still be a starting fantasy quarterback? Yes. Can he still be somebody that you you take as a second guy and he ends up being 10 through 12, 10 through 15? Right. Sure. But – he doesn't run. You're asking him to be, you know, 4,500 yards and 40 touchdowns again, and that's a lot for no, a 46-year-old dude. No, he just had a season with 25 touchdowns. You saw the floor. And he attempted 43 passes per game during the regular season. Yeah. Is he going to do that again when he's 46 going into 47? I, I find it hard to believe that he'll go to a place where he's going to want to throw the ball. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll want to throw the ball, but the coaching staff will want him to throw the ball 40 times a game. I just don't think it's it's sustainable. I do think the offensive line was a humongous problem all year. And I think it put him in the mindset of, I, I got to get rid of this ball quick. I got to get it out as soon as I get it because I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get injured. And so he needs like an all-pro style offensive line. Think of the best offensive line in football. 
uh, Dallas has a really good offensive line, right? Philly, now. sure. Yep. Philly's got an awesome one. If he had an offensive line like that, I could see him being good for fantasy, but I still feel like the ceiling is what you said, 10 to 12 among quarterbacks. Nah, I think if he went to Philly and he yeah. had that line and those receivers, then I think he could he could maybe be top five again. But uh that's top not has a lot to ask though. I know I don't run. Yeah, and it is, but he did it last year, you know. So But um, no one's gonna draft him with that in mind, and no one's gonna draft him with, with that type of upside. He's not gonna go to Philly. I, I don't think of he'll course be. not. I don't think he's <laughs> no, going I, I do think I do think, you know, when you look at openings, Miami, there was obviously the story last year, you know. So is is that something that they would revisit? And you know, would would they really consider, you know, bringing him in with that? Doesn't seem likely. Uh the Jets might make some sense, you know, for, yeah, for a team yeah. that would, I'm sure, drive Patriots fans crazy. Um, but they have an opening. They might they like have, it at this point. They have some nice receivers, but does he want to play in the cold? To me, it's Las Vegas. I, I think it's Vegas or bust at this point. There's an opening. There's a coach he's familiar with. There's good weapons there. If they can just invest in the offensive line, which seems like there's something that they could do, then that's the spot he goes to. The only problem is if you're him and you're looking to compete for another Super Bowl, you got to go through Mahomes. You got to go through potentially still Herbert and whatever the Broncos throw at you. It's a very tough path, especially with Kansas City.